market on race number five at Sandown, the Flinders Handicap. Thanks, Max. Yes, these are the uh, early tote prices for the first leg of the Daly Double at Sandown. Fleet Dancer is at 12 to 1. Ter Silver at 7 to 1. I've got my money on him. 9 to 2, Rich Dreams. 4, Big Dermot. 6, Trick and Treat. 20, Lord Delmar. 14, Regimental Lord. 30, 3 O Stirring. 33, Salieri Sun. The same price, Seattle Brave. Marillion Strike at 6.5 to 1. 13 to 2, Carla Rock is at 30. Cagney's Absent must still be in Hollywood. 50 to 1, Hemelwood. 66, Anachronism. 100 to 1, Festival King. Uh, Greshka is at 20 to 1. Versium at 100 to 1. And Rose of Pretoria also at 1. 100 to 1. The race due at 2.40. Back to you, Ken. Thank you, Ken. And if you haven't already done so, it's good to see you with such a big smile on your face. <laughs> I hope I've got one after this race at Sandown. It's the first leg of the double. It's the Flinders Handicap. It's over 2,009, or I should say 2,119 metres. The odd 19 is because of a, a movable rail being out and they stay at the same start. Won't make any difference, hopefully. Here we go. Fleet Dancer is at 11 to 1. Ter Silver. Good odds, I think. Young Jason Patton aboard uh, at six to one. I've got my cash on him. Rich Dreams is at four to one. Big Dermot getting out a little bit in the market is now at six to one. Trick and Treat at six to one. Lord Delmar, uh, big odds, but uh, probably looks outgraded. Good jockey, Peter Hutchinson to ride him. The Lord is at 25 to one. Another Lord, Regimental Lord, is at 15 to one. Then we've got a few roughies. Stirring at 33 to 1. Saliri Sun at 33 to 1. Seattle Brave at 40 to 1. And then the horse that's firmed very much in commission, Marillion Strike at 5 to 1. To be ridden by Stephen King, the boy who a couple of years ago won the Melbourne Cup on Let's Elope and won the recent Stradbroke Handicap on Never Undercharge. Marillion Strike into 5 to 1. Carla Rock. Troy Jackman, ex-West Aussie rider, making a big name in Melbourne on a roughie here at 25 to one shot. Jimmy Cagney, as I said, is not running. He was scratched. Hamilwood is at 50 to one. Uh, Anachronism is at 80 to one. Festival King at 100 to one. Greshka moved in a little bit on the tote, was 20s, now into 16s. David Taggart has got them out. Veer Gem is at 200 to one, so he should be. And Rose of Persia at 100 to one. As you can see, they're just milling behind the barriers. Uh, not quite ready uh, to commence yet. A few of them may have moved in, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, there they are, lining up behind the starting gates. Now, if you're looking for uh, a couple of these fancied runners, TAB number two, Ter Silver, the horse I've tipped you, is in black with gold spots and a gold cap. So uh, the Balmain colours, or the Richmond colours, black with gold spots and a gold cap. He's a seven-year-old, but he has been placed in 30 of his 65 starts, and he's got a sound chance. Trick and Treat, another one, uh, is in red, gold sash and sleeves and a blue cap. Just going past in the yellow there was Salieri's son, one of the roughies. The grey horse, number 12, is Carla Rock. There's the horse I spoke of, Ter Silva. just went past. Saddlecloth, number two, black with uh, the uh, uh, gold spots and the gold cap. Number 14 there is another, another one of the roughies, Hemelwood, to be ridden by Jay Hunter. And as you can see now, the attendants are starting to move these horses forward. Uh, today was uh, Australian Hurdle and Australian Steeple Day at, uh, at Sandown. Those two races are over. The jumping events create a great interest for the spectators, but aren't usually great betting mediums. However, there'll be a bit of money here. Uh, in the Flinders Handicap, a good uh, staying event of 2,119 metres. Meanwhile, up here in Sydney today, Kevin Moses reached a milestone. He became the first jockey for 15 years to ride 100 winners in a season. And Kevin did that in race two at Rose Hill on Blazing Anchor. Uh, blazing a uh, race three, I should say it was. Blazing anchor, trained by Jack Denham, got up and beat his stable mate, the favourite manly star, right on the line to win by a long head and make it a hundred winners for the season for K Moses. Uh, Moses then rode a short priced favourite uh, in uh, Tudor Row, but unfortunately he finished well down the field and never got sighted. We'll see Moses in action shortly uh, in the daily double races from Rose Hill, which will be showing uh, they'll be the next two races up after this. He'll ride Star Rock in the first leg and in the second leg Moses is on custodian righto we're getting uh, ready for a bit of action down there at Sandown about to go I want Ter Silver to win the horse in the black and the gold a big field as you can see time for us to cross to our caller John Russell as Fleet Dancer moves up on the extreme outside they're all ready for a start the Flinders handicap over 2100 meters waiting for the light 
All set to run. Should go. Off and running. Rose of Pretoria began well to the inside from Carla Rock and out quickly is Gresham with Meridian Strop dropping back along the insider. Out very quickly towards the centre. Big Dermot is looking for the lead and getting it as they race down to the judge with a circuit left to go. And Big Dermot is the leader. Led by a length and a half. Carla Rock close up behind them. Festival King Rose of Pretoria. And over on the outside to Silver Lord Del Mar. Very wide but going up towards the lead. Regimental Order. Anachronism is deep going out of the straight and they were followed by Silieri Sun on the insider. A length into Hamilwood. They're closely followed by Fleet Dancer. Two lengths away. Gresha, who's dropping a lock on the inside there on the outside, going around them quickly. Seattle Brave, followed by Rich Dreams. A length and a half to Veer Jim and a well strung outfield, followed by Trick and Treater, who's a long way out of his ground. He's third last, two lengths to Stirring, and last of all, Meridian Strike. 30 lengths covering the field into the back now, just over 1,300 metres to go, and Big Dermot the pilot led about two and a half lengths in second place. Regimental Lord on the outside of Carla Rock, two lengths away to Silver, two and a half lengths, Rays of Pretoria being followed by Anachronism on the outside, going forward, Lord Delmar. He's followed by Fleet Dancer in that group. Then Festival King over on the inside. Saliri son, a length and a half to Hamilwood. Two and a half lengths further back is Seattle Brave on the outside of Gresha being followed by Rich Dreams. A length and a half to Veer Gemma. Trick and Treat is still well back third last, followed by Stirring and Marillion Strike. Down the hill they travel, 850 metres out and Big Dermot the leader. About a length and a half. Regimental Lord on the outside of Carla Rock and moving up quickly is Ter Silva. Then Lord Delmar. Further back along the inside, Rose of Pretoria. Fleet Dancer starting to make ground around the outside of Anachronism, Festival King. Rich Dreams is a long way back at that point, being followed by Saliri Sana. And they were followed at the head of the others by Hamilwood and Veer Jim back behind them with Gresham as they make the home turn. Ter Silver's moved up very quickly on the outside and has hit the front as they straighten up with 400 to go. Ter Silver's kicked away a couple of lengths to Regimental Lord. Running on well down the outside, Lord Delmar, Fleet Dancer and back behind them, Big Dermot and Rich Dreams is a long way back. But Ter Silver going strongly down to the 200, led two and a half lengths to Lord Delmar now in second place, Regimental Lord and Fleet Dancer. Ter Silver is the leader in the final 100 metres. Lord Delmar starting to close the gap. Ter Silver still in front. Ter Silver's going to win it. Ter Silver by over a length to Lord Delmar. A wide apart for third, Fleet Dancer and Regimental Lord on the rails and a photo for third then Rich Dreams. Next home, Festival King followed by Seattle Brave Anachronism, Veer Jim, Marillion Striker and a long gap further back then is Stirring followed next home by Saliri's son then Hamilwood. Further back then is Gresher followed by Carla Rock Rose of Pretoria, Big Durban, and one of the tail enders is Trick and Treat. Yep. 2, 6 and 1 to Silver 7.20 and 2.60, Lord Dalmar 7.80 and Fleet Dancer $3.60. And with all the good oil on our next race at Rose Hill, it's race 6, the Banana Series. Here's Ken Callender. That look a pretty good bunch, Ken. <laughs> I'll get you a job as a script writer, Ben. Let's go through <laughs> that now. It. Red Machine is at five to two. I'm going to back him. Not an easy race, but uh, with Young Demon's allowance, he's quite well in. Banoon is at four to one. Tudor Row is a scratching. La Masque at 13 to two. Star of Maeske at seven to one. Defensive play now to be ridden by Matt Pravado. Rodney Quinn is not riding. Uh, at six and a half to one. Semi Armu, the same price. Northern Emperor was a late scratching today. Piano at 15 to one. Starocracy. Kevin Moses riding him. Seems good odds to me. 12 to one. And 25 to one. White Nav. Back to you, Ian. Right, you can. Thank you. Winners there, and all of you punters out there can take your pick of the bunch in race five out at Rose Hill. It's the Banana Series handicap over 1,500 metres, and he's the man who's out to skin the bookies. Ken Callender, off to a great start too, Kenny. Yeah, you're only as good as your next winner, though, Maxie. Uh, <laughs> one out of one so far, but I just hope that that horse there, not the front one, the horse ducking in behind him, Red Machine, TAB number one. There he is, young Jason Deemer, already ridden the winner here today. I hope this becomes number two for him. Uh, so you've seen its colours, bit windy but not like Randwick last week. Red Machine is at 5 to 2 on the tote, $3.50. Banoon at 4 to 1. Tudor Row is a scratching. La Masque is at 9 to 1. Uh, Star of Maeske, number 5, is at 8 to 1. Defensive play, Rodney Quinn, 6 and a half to 1, into about 6 to 1 now. Semi Armoud, TAB number 7, is into 5 to 1. Northern Emperor is a scratching. Piano is at 16 to 1. 10 to 1 Starocracy. White Nav 25s almost out to 30 to 1. Uh, I just have a peep. There's still about two to go over in, or three to go in. Badoon just going in there in the yellow colours. 
followed up by number seven, Semi Amu, and that horse there, number 11, is White Nav, one of the roughies. Banoon there, number two. Banoon in yellow colours with the blue cap. Trained by Max Lees, ridden by the leading apprentice, Daryl McClellan. Hello, Semi Amu doesn't want to go in. He said, turn it up. And I'll tell you something, he's missed the start once or twice. I hope he's not in that sort of mood today. Semi Amu uh, is ridden by Chris William, a very experienced horseman. And if uh, anyone's going to get him to go in, uh, William will know the tricks. There he goes now. Tendence, they earn their money, these boys. They get about 80 bucks a day. And there's kicking hooves all around them and uh, plenty of hard work. Megzi is the fellow leading in uh, Banoon there. They're all in, about to go. Our caller, as has been for the last two weeks, is Hilton Donaldson. Here he is. Now they're just about set to run. Race six, the Banana Series. Ready for a start. Once the lunge, they're racing. And the best to begin out wide with Samai Amu, showing speed, Lamas going quickly, looking for the front off star of Maiske. Away nicely, White Nav, Red Machine's going to settle fourth from Piano. Samai Amu, after jumping wheels, got back, has three behind it, including defensive play, and back with it, Banoon, and on its outside, on settling down a mile out of its early ground, was Starocracy. Well, Lamask went fast enough to take the lead by two lengths on Star of Maiske. White Nav, it's outside. Two lengths, Piano and a half to Red Machine. Two and a half, Samaya Amu, who's about five lengths off the lead. Defensive play next, one and a half, Starocracy. And three quarters, Banoon, who's back to last today and off the rail. They race to the 800 metre mark and it's Lamask leading by a length. Second, White Nav and three quarters, Star of Maiske, travelling well third. Red Machine moving up on its outside. Piano trying to push off the rail and does so. Then came Semi Amu move from defensive play Starocracy and in a bunching field Banoon's catching up but still last. 450 metres to go on the home turn and the leader Lamask, the outside getting on terms White Nav, three wide Red Machine four wide Banoon, just behind them Star of Maiske and Samaya move off the track is running on and right down the outside Starocracy at the 200, Banoon took the lead from Red Machine, who can't quite go with it. Samaya Moo's only battling and deep on the track. Starocracy. Now Samaya Moo getting a go on after Banoon, but it's still Banoon from Samaya Moo. Banoon, Samaya Moo, Starocracy. Samaya Moo lunging at Banoon. They hit the line, and I think Samaya Moo's got up to a win from Banoon. Third, Starocracy, followed by Red Machine. Then came defensive play from White Nav Piano. Further back, star of May Skay and a long gap, Lamask, who just couldn't run the 1500. Well, he might have been playing up at the start, but I think he's arrived in time. That's Banoon in front, under heavy pressure in the blinkers with the yellow colours and the blue cap. Samaya Mu coming at him, another blue cap with red and blue colours. TAB number seven on his saddlecloth. Samaya Mu diving at Banoon, very close. We'll try and line them up as they hit the line. Banoon's still in front, but now Samaya Mu's grabbed him, and I reckon he's beaten him for sure. TAB number seven will pay 560 a win and 190 a place. Number two, Banoon will be second, will pay also $1.90 $1 for the place. And number 10, Starocracy, will be third to pay $2.90. That's the story. They're not official yet, but I think you'll find that Semiamu has beaten Banoon and Starocracy. Here's Maxi. Yes, thanks, Ken. Just a flared nostril in that one. Plenty ahead of, on the show, too, including Lisa Ondiki in the New York Mini Marathon. We'll be back with more in a moment. <laughs> Evidence for Rosal Race 6, the Banana Series, 7, 2 and 10. Semi Amu, 560, 190. Banoon, appropriate, $1.90. And Staro Starocracy, $2.90. Four matches underway this afternoon in the AFL. Let's see how things are going. Melbourne and Essendon. Melbourne leads by four over the Bombers. Hawthorne and St Kilda. And Hawthorne well in front, 12 goals, 6 to St. 7 goals, 2. Carlton and Adelaide. And uh, a close one here with the Blues in front, 52 to 47. And how the Swan is going against Footscray. <coughs> Footscray, eight goals, eight, 56. The Swans, two goals, four, 16. Three is now with an early market. I'm going to go win, 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 win. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, here we go. Number one, potential star at three to one. The Abbott at seven to two. Charrick at nine to one. Icicle at 20 to one. Le Boatman at 10 to one. 11 to four, red on the run. $3.70 for a dollar. 
and I tell you no lies, I'm going to bet up on him. I think he'll win. Plumeroy at 33 to 1. Custodian seems fair price too at 6 to 1. Probably he's the main danger to my way of thinking. Prince Rebo at 33 to 1. 60 to 1 now, get a rhythm. And a pleasant anchor, the roughy of the field at 100 to 1. The race is due at 3.45 Eastern. Here's Maxie. Thanks very much, Ken. And later on the show, we'll be giving away that $5,000 prize. Thanks a lot, Max. Yes, there, the, there are the horses parading behind the 2,000 metre start. And it won't be long uh, before we get to a start. That horse there, uh, you can see in the background, number six with the white cap. Uh, we've just lost it for a minute. That's my tip. That's red on the run. Unfortunately, he's sweating up a bit there today and he's a little bit nervy. I hope that doesn't uh, show in his race performance. I've put my cash on him. He's out the three to one. You see the attendant there with the towel. Perhaps he's going to wipe some of that sweat off. Let's look at these tote prices. Potential stars favourite in the betting ring now and he's favourite on the tote at 11 to four. The Abbott is at four to one. Charrick being well backed is at seven to one. 25 to one Icicle. Le Boatman is at 12 to one. He's better on a wet track. Red on the run is out the three to one. Give him strength. Grant Cooksley, a very experienced jockey. Plumeroy, a roughy, four 40 to 1, he needs wet too. Custodian, well in commission, $6.10, just on 5 to 1, a touch over. Prince Rebo is a 40 to 1 chance. Get a Rhythm is out to 80 to 1, and Pleasant Anchor is at 100 to 1. Uh, there's the horse in question again. TAB number 6, red on the run. Still throwing his head around. Settle down, son, I need you to win this. Crooksley takes him in. They're all in. They're about to go. Here's our caller, Hilton Donaldson. Thanks, Ken. The flag is up. Blind start for me in this commentary position, but of course you've got the uh, the bird's eye view right there at the start. Gates crash open their racing and Custodian was one of the best to begin from the inside with Get A Rhythm as they link up with the course proper. Wider on the course, Plumeroy showing plenty of speed, Prince Rebo and Charrick in a line and also there is Pleasant Anchor. And wider on the track, red on the run, trapped out of the 1700, getting back potential star from Icicle. And last of all on settling down is Le Boatman. At the 1600 metre mark, they race. And uh, taking over now, Prince Rebo from on the inside, Custodian. Moses is going to allow Prince Rebo to go to the front on Custodian. And he settles second now. Third on the outside, red on the run, but he's been caught wide. Back on the inside was Charrick and potential stars moved up nicely around red on the run. About two lengths away, the grey get a rhythm being passed by Plume Roy and Pleasant Anchor. Two lengths behind them, the Abbott. About three lengths, Le Boatman and a, and a half length back on the inside is Icicle. At the 1100 metre mark, and the pace has been good in this race, where on the inside it's Custody and the outside Prince Rebo and they match strides by two lengths. Potential star running third on the outside of Red on the Run. Two lengths further back, Charrick. It was racing on the inside. Uh, of, uh, on the inside of Plume Roy and then came Will back in the field Pleasant Anchor followed by uh, next in the field Get a Rhythm from the Abbott Icicle and back with it Le Boatman 700 before them it's Custody and Prince Rebo and they carve this win now by two lengths on potential star red on the run the rail Plume Roy hard ridden pulling out three wide as Pleasant Anchor makes its run four wide further back Charrick the Abbott looking for an inside run Get a Rhythm from Icicle and Le Boatman coming to the turn 400 metres to go and they start to pack up Custody and Prince Rebo under pressure and Potential Star going for his namesake hit the front. Potential Star got a length clear. Red on the runs under immense pressure. Down the outside running on Will the Abbott from a mile back. It's making good ground but Potential Star inside the 200 got two lengths in front. Red on the runs battling. The Abbott's racing greenly out wide but it is making ground. Potential Star in front. The Abbott is trying to reach it. It's running out badly and losing ground as a result and Potential Star will hang on. Potential Star won by three quarters to the Abbott who raced very green under pressure in the straight. Red on the run, the Kiwi ran another great race. He's run third from uh, Prince Rebo, then Custodian from Charrick Icicle, get a rhythm, then Pleasant Anchor, Wilback, Plume Roy, and last Le Boatman. Well, well, there was no excuses there for the beaten division. He was too good, potential star, and you'll find the numbers are one, two, and six. That's potential star in front now. Number two, the Abbott, the grey horse down the outside, charges home to run second, and red on the run, the horse I tipped you, I thought was just a little bit disappointing in finishing in third place. No doubt about the winner, potential star on the TAB has paid $3.90 a win, $1.60 a place. Number two, the Abbott has paid $1.90 for second, and third, number six, red on the run, has also paid paid $1.90. That was the story of the second leg of the Daly Double in Sydney. Next up will be the second leg at Sandown in Melbourne.
Look forward to that one too, Ken. Still to come on the show, a chat with two of Border's boys and $5,000 cash for a lucky viewer. We'll be back. At one, two and six. Potential star 390 and 160. The Abbott 190 and Red on the Run $1.90. Checking the scores in the AFL. Melbourne and Essendon at the MCG. And we've got Melbourne in front. Eight goals, nine to Essendon. Six goals, eight. Hawthorne and St Kilda. And uh, Hawthorne in front, 14 goals, 10 to the Saints, 8 goals, 4. Carlton and Adelaide, how are they going there? Carlton's back in front, 12 goals, 5 to Adelaide, 8 goals, 6. And Footscray playing the Swans, it's 70 to 30, a 40-point lead to Footscray over the Swans. Now, let's have a go out to Rose Hill, to Kenny Callender for a tote call of Sandown, race 7. Ken. Yeah, thanks very much, Bear. Uh, the second leg of the Daly Double coming up there, and we've got the early tote prices, all very close to the final ones. Bashi's Pride resuming from a spell of longer than 12 months with George Hanlon is at 20 to 1. Damien Oliver had a spill on the track this morning and she's to be ridden by Simon Marshall. Special sculpture, a bit of a tip has come in on the tote. Stephen King at 5 to 1. 25 Blue Perfect. 12 Norani. I've tipped Silk Shalali at 4 to 1. Claire's Girl is out. Gondo Bell at 25. Framed at 7. Tell Your Fortune at 10. Brazen at 25 to 1. Cool Northley 100. Courtly Bell at 20. Lola Mia at 11 to 2. Sister Yakov 40. Mystique Aura is a scratching. Miss Mead 160. Rags No More at 8 to 1. General Jewel 66. Freeway Girl is out. And Jinai at 60 to 1. Well, there's only one or two to go in down there. Uh, Silk Shillali and Special Sculpture seem to be the top two in the market, although Lola Mia, TAB number 13, has, uh, has had her supporters as well. Uh, Special Sculpture, trained by Angus Armanesco, is ridden by Stephen King. Uh, and as I keep telling you, one of the fine young jockeys in Australia won the Stradbroke handicap on Never Under Charge. Silk Shillali, Peter Hutchinson's mount, races in green with gold shamrocks. Of course, she'd have shamrocks, white sleeves and a gold cap. So that's her colours. And uh, Special Sculpture is in white, purple sash and gold cap. They're about to jump. Here's John Russell. A race set aside for the mares over 1,300 metres. Standing by for a start. Second leg of the double. They're off now. Silk Shalale first to bound out with Frame. Getting away quickly. Narani and also Lola Mia. And Gondamel got out pretty well too with Tell Your Fortune. Followed by Brazen and Courtly Bell just behind them. Janaya's over on the inside. White on the track to Blue Perfect. Followed by Miss Mead and Rags No More. Length to Bassie's Pride on the inside of Special Sculpture. General's Jewel back behind them. Followed by Sister Yoko, who's second last. And Cool Northerly last of all. At the 900 metre mark, here's a good go for the lead. On the outside, Lola Mia has it by a neck in advance of the inside. Silk uh, Salale going nicely just in behind them is in third place then Narani being followed by Brazena over on the inside to Gondabell and wide on the track as Miss Mead tell your fortune rags no more courtly Bell Janaya they're followed by Blue Perfect and further back in the field just in behind them at the head of the others making up some ground Sister Yokoi being followed by General's Jewel now rags no more has made a very fast run around the outside as they come around the home turn and framed is in the picture also Narani is there in the centre Brazena and over on the inside Silk Shalale and tell your fortune and behind them is Lola Mia as they run to the 300 metre mark. Rags no more now and Frame to settling down to fight it out. They're out in front by two and a half lengths to tell your fortune from Courtly Bell and Special Sculpture finishing on from a long way back. Framed on the inside, the leader from Rags no more and flying home Special Sculpture and tell your fortune but Framed on the inside is just in front close to home and Frame will hang on and score. He's just won. Framed I think's just won from Special Sculpture who flew on the line. Rags no more in behind them followed by Courtly Bell, Sister Yokoi Bassie's pride cool northerly and uh, they were followed by Janae, and uh, further back in the field then uh, would be Tell Your Fortune and Lola Mia, back behind them, Gondabella, and uh, further away then is Narani, being followed by Silk Shalala, who weakened in the run home, Braz in a long way back there with Blue Perfect, uh, and Miss Mead, one of the tail enders. Yeah, well, I think you'll find that framed in the pink colours has held on for Paddy Payne, uh, just shaking the reins at her. Now he pulls the whip on the mare, and frame gives plenty. In the green colours, that's Rags No More, who looks like challenging him at this, or challenging her at this point. Now watch out the widest out with the yellow cap, that special sculpture, who absolutely steams home over the last 50 metres and probably gets up to run second. But framed in front, now special sculpture starts to dive for Stephen King. Where's that winning post if you're on framed? There it is, and it looks like frames just held on from special sculpture with rags no more in third place. We'll flash the official placings down the line as soon as they become official. 
Here's Ken, a very tight run to the finish line there, and we're striding comfortably through another Saturday afternoon. 8, 2 and 17, frame $9 even and $3 even, special sculpture two ten, and rags no more $2.90. Four matches on in the AFL this afternoon. The short scores, Melbourne and Essendon. Melbourne 61, Essendon 50, Hawthorne against St Kilda, and it's the Hawks 100, St Kilda 65, Carlton playing Adelaide. And uh, Carlton leads this one 96 to 60. Footscray against the Swans. Footscray 73 and Sydney 31. And there are the scores, Max. Talk to you soon. Thanks very much.